let's get to it. Um, we'll start in a, a R Studio project. Create always create a new R Studio project, and we're going to do a new Shiny app. Now, um, when you're creating a Shiny app, you can go to New and click on this and call it a name and you get a choice is between a single file where um, UI and server and same file or a multiple file and generally I most of the time I'm using multiple files when it's uh, a big shiny app um, just because it's easier to manage and all that but for this these purposes because it's quite a small app we're just going to do a sort of single file one and so you can call it a name and click on that but we'll just sort of create one here. So here we are with a, a bare minimum um, sort of framework uh, skeleton for a shiny app um, and the key elements here is that we've got a UI which generates the HTML for the shiny app and the server which is um, deciding what the HTML will um, output and then at the very bottom this is the last thing that's executed when you run um, you're going to get the, the shiny app um, and if you run that um, you'll get nothing because there's nothing to show but at least it works um, okay, so but for for our purposes, we're going to use um, we want to um, authenticate with Google Analytics our Google Analytics and pull that data in. So um, at the very least, we're going to need Google Author, which is like handles all the um, authentications and things like that. Um, and then um, we're going to set the uh, client scope. Um, and this is a Google project that you uh, should create. Um, if you don't, you'll have, you'll have to rely on the default one in Google Analytics R. And that's um, gen best. If you're doing Shiny, then you're gonna you're gonna need to ha have your own uh, Google project. So uh, we'll walk through how to do that. So at, at the very least, um, when you're kind of um, looking around, uh, you need to create your Google project and you'll make a name up here. And um, you don't necessarily need billing if you're just using Google Analytics, but um, we will need billing for the Google Language R uh, library later on. So this has uh, billing attached. And you've got various um, client IDs that you can um, uh, create. And these are sort of identifying that it's your project that you want to uh, authenticate with. Um, and the sort of key ones that you want is um, for the t you're going to create a client ID and you can um, do that at the top here and um, you want basically you want the type other if you're authenticating offline and that's for normal sort of use uh, when you're just using it in your browser but for shiny in particular we're going to want a web application one so you have sort of two distinct ones there um, and these are distinct from the service account keys which we'll talk about a little bit later but um, because they're like actual getting access to your data this is just the app that's the data is going to run through if that makes sense and um, once you create these, then you get the option down here to actually download uh, that JSON file. Um, and uh, that's what I've uh, done here. I've downloaded this uh, web application ID. And then this is an, a function from Google Author, which um, basically sets the client and sets all the details that you need um, to uh, work with it. So uh, by default, it's looking for an environment file uh, GAR client web JSON. You could supply the file path directly here, but it's more convenient to put it in an environment. Um, so now here's my environment file, and I put it actually in the folder with this app because I want to sort of publish this app later. Though you could have it in your home uh, directory, I've got one there as well, and that's for when I'm doing it offline and at home. But um, if I'm actually wanting to publish this app, then I'm going to have to publish this as well. Um, so that it will know where all the files are and um, we will cover this bit a bit later but this is the file that I've um, downloaded and put into a GAR client web JSON um, and that's in this folder here for for the purposes so basically what this line does is that it takes that client JSON and says this is the project that you want to be going with um, and then also uh, remember that if we're, um, you have to activate the analytics uh, library as well. So make sure that when you go there, you've got API enabled. Um, if not, click it on. And then your project will be able to accept uh, Google Analytics requests. So, um, yeah, so once we've got all of that, then um, 
now we actually want to sort of um, get the authentication button up. So this is the GAR auth. Now I'm actually using the JavaScript um, authentication here because uh, it's just sort of sometimes more convenient. We just take a quick look at that right now. You can see it basically makes a login button. And um, yeah, that's uh, what um, this module does. It won't do anything yet because we haven't set it up. But um, for those purposes, when you're uh, looking at the credentials um, for your uh, web client, if you click through here, then you're going to have these authorized JavaScript origins. And because we're using the JavaScript version, then we need to fill this in. If you're using the other version where you just need read, redirect URLs, then you can just stick with those ones. But for the JavaScript one, you need to fill this one in. Um, and this doesn't accept um, IP addresses. So um, you can't put in 127.0.0.1, which is the normal home one. But that that is uh, local host is the equivalent of that. So if you put in local host, then you will uh, be able to um, authenticate with the JavaScript. And then you also need to set the port number that you're going to be doing. And 1221 is the one I kind of use. And you can set that if with your options. Uh, so the options uh, shiny port like that one two two one and I have that set in my um, at the very start now you don't need this if you're not doing a local host if you're doing it and just a bare um, a normal uh, web address then it will be port 80 which is the normal uh, HTTP port but for my for these purposes we need to sort of specify the port um, and uh, yeah, the one annoying thing is that when you actually launch um, Shiny like this, if you put that in the browser like this, if you run external, then it actually triggers it on 127.0.1. So what I do is I actually just change this to localhost like that, and that's exactly the same. Um, but the, uh, so what I do is I run this in the viewer pane here. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, if you run it, it appears in the viewer pane, and then I just have local host here. And that because that server is started by that process, then when you refresh this, then this is uh, this is there as well, and this accepts the uh, JavaScript origin. So that's good for local testing. And um, when you're like published in online and all this, then you'll just put in the web address of where uh, you you need to get authentication from. In in this case, this is my Shiny Apps uh, account example so um hopefully that's uh you can sort of see how it all <laughs> fits together um and uh yeah so what well, we've basically got to the situation now this is just making the ui but if we actually need to make it uh do something then uh, we need to put in the module which uses this ui and uh, creates the authentication token and everything like that so if we stop that and run, uh, it won't work from there because of the thing, but if we refresh this one and you push login, uh, login screen. So we've got, and we can see it hasn't done anything yet. We just know it's sort of worked in that respect. So once you get that far, then um, we're pretty much that's the hard bit over. Um, it's a pain that the hardest bit is first, but that's <laughs> the rest of the way it works with APIs. Um, so yeah, um, one other thing, yeah, we've set the scopes here. So the scopes is, um, what the, what we want to authenticate with. Uh, so we've got analytics read only because that's all, all we need. If you go to the plugin here for Google author, then, um, it gives you a sort of list of all the scopes that you need. So if we look at for analytics in here, and it's reporting, then you can see it's analytics read only, uh, and analytics if you want. So. Yeah, so it gives you the list of what you need there. So, um, yeah, so now we've got the authentication tone. That's all this uh, token. That's all that this uh, code does at the moment. But now we actually want to get sort of data and accounts and things like that. So, but first of all, um, let's just finish our uh, UI. Um, so we've only just got a login button at the moment, but let's actually uh, add some things that we actually want to see. So this is going to be a very, very basic app for the moment. Um, what we're doing here is uh, we're going to use another um, module now called Auth Dropdown UI, and that's 
something that's from Google Analytics are. So we're going to load that library here. Um, so this will load that library. And I'm calling this before Google Analytics are so that it uses your project rather than the default one that's in, in there. If you've set it before you load the library, then it will default, it will use your one. And uh, yeah, so now this is sort of the, the entirety of our basic plot. And uh, so if we run that, then you can start to see that we're getting some more uh, useful stuff. Uh, go back to the look at that. And you can start to see now we've got the off drop down is basically giving you this interface where you can select your uh, Google Analytics ID. And the date picker is a, a shiny default thing where you can uh, select the dates that you want to see the data from. Um, and that, and by default, we're saying look 300 days in the past, but you can you can change all of that. Um, and these uh, and the bit in columns here just make sure that it goes across the page rather than um, down. But your preference, you know, pick your preference. And the plot output is the trend plot, where well, there's nothing to plot yet, so it's it's there, but it's just not doing anything. So now we need to actually populate these uh, UI elements with um, data. So we've got the authentication here, but uh, now um, we actually want to pull in the GA accounts. I'm cheating a bit because I've got this all on another page, but um, yeah, here we are with uh, GA accounts. And that's uh, using, it's a relying, you have to wait for you till you've got authentication, but then once you've got it, then we're using this with shiny function to wrap the GA account list, which you use normally offline. Um, we do this so that we can pass in the authentication tone uh, token within the session. So every you always have with Shiny, the first argument is the function, and then you always have the Shiny access token pr uh, parameter. And if there's any other uh, arguments you need to pass to this function, then they sort of follow here, but there's none for this one, so we can just leave it like this. So um, that will give us the accounts. And then the actual view ID, so we can output what the view ID uh, has been chosen, is used by this uh, module here. And that takes as an input the GA accounts uh, table, and uh, and it uses that to judge, to populate the, the view ID. Okay, so we've got the view ID now. When we look at the, uh, we can fetch in the data, and we've got all the accounts here. Um, and the output of this module will be the view ID that you've got here. Um, and that's what will be represented by this element, which is a reactive element in Shiny. So now we actually want to get the data um, from Google Analytics. And this is in a similar format to the GA accounts here, where we need to wrap it with Shiny um, and uh, pass in the Shiny access token. But now, because we're getting um, a more complicated function, then we need to add in more um, arguments. So, um, here we're, requ we're requiring that we need the view ID to um, be present and we've got a date and this just prevents sort of nulls and red things whilst it's loading and things. Um, and then we wrap the function with this with shiny from Google Author and then the first uh, argument is the Google Analytics function and then we pass in all of the arguments that that function needs. Uh, the first one is view ID. Um, and then you need to start naming these really. I mean, this should be named really. Um, but um, yeah, you name the all the arguments that are passed to this function. And this we're doing very simply. We're just saying the date range is going to be uh, what the input is coming in from Shiny, the, 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 uh, this uh, date range here, date picker. Um, we're just sticking it to be date for the dimension and the metrics is sessions. We're sort of hard coding these in, but these can very well come from other inputs. Um, and that's um, definitely used in other shiny apps around. Um, and then we want all the data, so we're putting max there. Um, but every function that uses with shiny always needs to have the shiny access token as well. And that is passing in the authentication token that has been created by uh, the, this module up here. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, necessary for every uh, with Shiny function. So now we have the data, we put it in the reactive because um, it's good practice to have your API calls separate from your output. So now we need to use this reactive and actually use it to uh, 
uh, output data so we can see it. And this, and this will only trigger one you have an output because so that's the way Shiny works. So um, the trend plot we've got here, we're just going to render a plot. Um, it's it's look it's going to wait until it sees this data uh, is ready. It's not null. Um, I always tend to do this just because it makes the error messages um, easier. Um, if something goes wrong, then it's much easier to, for, for R to say what's happened with this rather than this, which is a sort of reactive function, which yeah can be confusing. So I just usually just rename reactive data at the top there, and then. Um, it's plotting it uh, a typical line chart, um, and then and then that's it for this simple one. So um, just going over that, we've got this module here that does the authentication. Uh, that's these two. Then we have a, a column which um, does another module which does the uh, accounts web property in select view. Um, then we've got the date range picker, and then we've got the plot coming out, and that is it. So now if we uh, stop that, run that again. Uh, and look here, and refresh that. So now we've got, we should have all the elements uh, together. So if we log in, <clears throat> okay, and there we have data. Um, so if we just go to my blog, and you can sort of stick around, you can sort of change these dates. And every time you're changing these elements, then the reactive um, uh, data here, the GA data is, is changing. So every time you change the view ID or the date picker, then it has to recalculate this. Uh, and that's uh, that's what you want. So um, yeah, so now we have a basic Shiny app that's pulling in data from Google Analytics. So um, that's all well and good. And uh, yeah, there's lots and lots of things you can do uh, on top of that. But hopefully if you can get that far, then you're pretty much done the hardest bit, which is authentication and getting your data and now you just need to make it pretty and uh, add statistics on top of it.